Okay, guys. Back here with the dragon once again. Forgive me ahead of time because I got the camera propped up here on a coffee can or what have you. <laughs> and uh, from time to time, the bench shakes a little bit and uh, rattles the camera. So just like that probably. So I'll try to be delicate, but basically I left you off with, I uh, removed the bowl to the carburetor. Everything looks really clean, but I'm just gonna go ahead through it anyway. Um, go ahead and remove the jets, the float, the needle and seat, remove the diaphragm and everything so I can just get a good cleaning. That way I have peace of mind uh, that the job is done and I won't have any kind of difficulties with it. So right now, removing the float and attached to the float is the needle. So when the float, just like I've said a million times, the float will float in this bowl, okay, but it's this way, up and down. And then this little, they call it a needle valve because when the float comes up, that little needle comes up, it goes right into this little hole and shuts the fuel off when you have enough. That's why it's important to have that adjusted properly and so forth. So we're gonna be cleaning these parts up here shortly, <clears throat> but I'm gonna go ahead, I gotta, I kind of made this special, took this old screwdriver and I blunted the tip of it. And that's what I use uh, to get small jets out. It works perfectly, fits in there. And sometimes you got to give it, you hear that little crack, you probably didn't hear it, but that's what you're looking for. You don't want to round it off or mess it up because then you can't get it out. Then you can't clean it. So there's my pilot jet, slow jet, small jet. Everybody's got their own name for that drop that in the bowl and then i'm going to remove the main jet fast jet primary jet now of course the whole thing wants to come out but that's fine too because i'm going to pull this emulsion tube out and uh that basically is your transition you get a little bit of air in there and it already kind of mixes the air with the fuel so it atomizes properly i'm going to throw that in the bowl as well because that's all going to be cleaned up now I'm just kind of inspecting, see if there's any visually thing that uh, pops out that shouldn't. And now I'm gonna remove the uh, air and fuel mixture screw because I'm also, this is the idle circuit, slow circuit, pilot circuit, whatever you wanna call it. Everybody's got a different name for everything, so. This is a air screw, fuel screw, people call it a lot of things. It usually has a little spring with a uh, rubber O-ring in there. So there's my spring and the O-ring is most likely, <laughs> excuse me, most likely stuck down inside there. And then I use a little piece of, yeah, there's a washer too. It looks like, and uh, the O-ring. And I've got these really tiny fine wire. Uh, matter of fact, this is what I use right here. And I cut a little piece off, excuse me, while I reach for my pliers. I have one over on my other bench already made up, but since I just happen to have this laying here, it's a miracle one time I was actually prepared. And then what I usually do is I'll put just a tiny little bend on it. You can even bend it up or whatever. Uh, that was a little extreme because <laughs> it's really tiny little thing you got to get a hold of. And then what I do is I kind of clip it off real short. So it's barely got any kind of little hook. That's probably too small, but you see what I'm talking about. And then you can stick that up in there and you can fish out the uh, washer. Yeah, I don't have enough hook on this one yet, though. Let's see here. Sometimes this takes a few shots. I don't always get it on the first shot here. But anyway, you can fish that up in there and you can grab a hold. Sometimes a, a um, stiffer piece of wire will work also if you can get it bent. But uh, yeah, this, there's the washer. Here it comes. Oh, and the O-ring. So, uh, Sorry if it's not focusing. Let me peek around the corner and see where I got to be with this thing. Yeah, you can see it. 
So yeah, this is a little barbaric uh, videoing here, but uh, this is what this is what you get. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I just pulled that. Uh, well, you've seen it. Pulled the little O-ring and the washer out. Okay, and then best thing to do with that is go ahead and put it back on the needle or screw, whatever you want to call it, in the proper order. Now, if this little O-ring is too flat or dry rotted or anything like that, then replace it. I have a bunch of them from other kits and stuff. I may go ahead and replace that, but just put that back in your bowl there and uh, you'll be good to go. Okay, so that's the bottom of the carburetor. It's all disassembled, all the jets are out, the um, needle and float and everything's out. So I'm gonna turn my attention to the top of the carburetor here. And uh, if you saw the last video, uh, the previous mechanic had messed the screws up and I had to actually tap in an Allen wrench to uh, get them out. So I don't know if we're going to end up doing that this time or he's probably never had this top off. Wow. Yeah, look at that. That wasn't even tight. And they couldn't figure out why it wouldn't run right. <laughs> uh, same with that. Not even tight. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to Pull this cap off here, the top of the carburetor. Oh, that one's not even tight either. Ay, yeah, yay. Oh, wait a minute, we might have one tight, folks. Yep, that's what was holding it all together. Jeez. Some people's children, I tell you. So under here, we're gonna have a diaphragm and a spring. Just for now, I'm gonna go ahead and drop these bowl retaining screws in the bowl so I don't get them mixed up. Bear with me, because like I said, I don't know what they've been using to take these screws out, but every one of them's a little bit chewed up. I'll get this one next since it has the linkage on it. That makes it a little tougher because it's got a it's got the idle screw. Sorry, I keep bouncing that, guys. It's got the idle screw, so there's a little bit of tension on that. So it makes it kind of odd to get off. You might have to just hold that a little bit with your hand while you're doing it. Of course, this screw is just being ignorant anyway. So let's take a second here. There you go, a little music for you. Sometimes I hate when people are trying to talk and they put that music on in their videos. If you notice all my videos, I keep saying all, over the years how I'm gonna do better for you guys and get somebody to film this and all this stuff. But uh, my videos are shot raw from a camera phone ever since the day I started this. I've never edited anything. I've never had a proper camera. And um, so yeah, they're a little barbaric. I don't monetize them, so I don't have all these commercials and so forth. They got this bracket about half bent up here, so it's got the screw coming out in a in a bind. So oh, this is just lovely. Okay, so anyway, like I was saying, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. Oh, we gotta get us another little wrench. And of course. I don't have that one. You guys will have to stand by for another second. Let me see if I got something handy here that'll work. Uh, for that, this is a combination that seems like between um, standard and, oh, I won't be able to get to it with those. Okay. Stand by, guys. Let me pause it. I'll be right back. Okay, guys. Sorry about that. I had to run over and get another Allen wrench that I didn't have so I could get this out. It's in a terrible spot. I should have took this out first. It probably would have been easier to get the other screw out, but anyway, so there you go. Learn from me. <laughs> Learn from my mistakes, not your own. All right, so I'm just going to remove this bracket here and linkage. I'll get to go ahead and stick this little screw back in there just for the heck of it. Okay, so now get back to where we were. I can remove this cap and you'll see under this cap is a spring and then there's a diaphragm with a slide and a needle. Okay. So look at that magic, like I had x-ray vision. 
So there's your spring. And uh, you can change those for different rates. This is gonna be my, like I say, the diaphragm. And uh, basically you just wanna gently peel this thing out of the groove. If it's stuck, just take care to, uh, to get it out of there without any kind of damage, whatever you gotta do. Unless you like spending $100 on a new one. These are not supposed to have to be replaced, but sometimes they get fuel up in there and they will get hard. I've seen them ripped in some old ones and then you have to replace it. But uh, this is your diaphragm, your slide, and this is your needle. And down inside of here um, is all the retainers and everything. And this is where you can see now this one, what I'm gonna say without pulling it out and losing, um, some of them you hear people say about it having clips on it. Let me back up to see if you're getting this. There'll be a clip there that adjusts this needle up and down. Um, this particular setup actually has shims down in here and you can adjust the needle up or down and that will help with performance when you're rolling on and off the throttle. Um, it, you know, the position of it being up and down in there. So there are adjustments there. There are things that have to be cleaned and corrected. So we're gonna set this to the side and what I normally do, uh, I don't have one here ready. Hang on one second, I'll show you. This is not what I, I usually use a real large deep well socket that's heavy and it'll hold this, but what I'm gonna do now, I don't know if that's on camera, but I'll set that needle down in there right now and keep that thing secure. So you can see that uh, they get a little dirty. This is just gunk and there is an air passage. Sorry again if, you, if I'm not catching this. Air passage there for the choke, which controls the vacuum for the choke. There's all kinds of air passages right here. Uh, it's a big one, but all that stuff has to be cleaned out so that slide works properly. Clean out the inside of the carburetor, you know, the body of the carburetor. Obviously, all these passages, there's tiny little air passages going through here. So we're going to clean them, take the air, uh, compressed air, blow through there, make sure they're all working properly. And uh, we'll clean up the throat here and the butterfly and get all that stuff nice and cleaned up. And it looks like everything's going to be good to go. We'll be able to put it all back together and then it reinstalled on the bike. If we put fresh gas in it, this carburetor would operate properly. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Clean all the jets, all the stuff I just told you about, and I'll put it all back together. I'm not going to bore you with that process because it's just basically I'm squirting carburetor cleaner in there. I'm not going to soak this thing. Uh, it obviously is really good shape. So once again, going to clean the passages, blow them out, spray some carburetor cleaner in there, clean all this stuff up, reassemble this, and back on the bike. All right, guys, appreciate you following along. Dragon says stay safe and peace out.